The Green MP, in a way, has been described as the party's face of human rights. She's a lawyer uh, who, you know, put world leaders on trial for abusing powers, or so it's said until a bit of rewriting of history may have gone on. On this programme yesterday, we confronted Ago Rez with a fo- uh, about that photo of her smiling with Simon uh, Bikidi, uh, who was sent to jail in 28 for 15 years. She told us she doesn't regret uh, posing for that camera, saying she goes by the premise that you're innocent until proven guilty, and all she's been doing throughout that entire process as a volunteer was following the human rights process of international law. A man who has been heavily critical of that is political commentator Phil Quinn, who joins me now, and good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Very well. Good to have you back on our programme. Let's uh, talk about some of the things that you've been critical for. Gorez says, yes. although she's done, all she's done really is uphold international court of law process by being part of a defence team, are you angry she volunteered to be part of it or angry that she wasn't more open about her involvement? No, my, my primary concern is not with the politics of this. Um, when it comes to Rwanda and genocide, and in particular genocide denial, it's a, about a hell of a lot more than politics to me. Having worked and lived in Rwanda for, for three years and having seen up close the consequences of what occurred in 1994. No, my objection is to the moral choice that she made. In spending a year in Africa as a human rights lawyer, she had no shortage of opportunities to apply her experience and her skills on the ground with victims and survivors uh, in conflict zones and in post-conflict regions in sub-Saharan Africa. Instead, what did she choose to do? She chose to volunteer for three months as an unpaid intern for the defence team uh, of some of the worst criminals of the latter part of the 20th century. And can I just comment, Chris, on, on this point of guilt and innocence with regards to Simon Bikindi? Simon Bikindi, with whom she posed in a, in a beaming selfie, was a singer-songwriter whose songs urging mass slaughter of Tutsis were broadcast ad nauseum for the 100 days of the genocide. He caused thousands of deaths. There is no question in anyone's mind that Simon Bikindi was one of the key instigators in inciting the genocide. The notion that he was innocent before proven guilty is absurd, and while he is entitled to due process, which he got to the tune of $32 million in in legal fees, while of course he's entitled to it, he is not entitled to an intern who wants to take happy snaps with him. And if you look at my actual Rwandans whose voices should be heard, they are disgusted by uh, her her photo with Bikindi. In fact, the UN ambassador uh, for Rwanda called it scandalous, and that's exactly what it is. So essentially what you're saying is that you're questioning Gorez and her moral judgment then and therefore her ability to make sensible decisions as a member of parliament in this country. I believe genocide denial, which was the core of the ICTR defence strategy that she was working with, genocide denial, which is largely about uh, blaming the victims, that is the Tutsi, Uh, for the genocide and not the perpetrators. Victim blaming is at the heart of genocide denial. That that is, to me, and I understand I'm particularly engaged on this issue, but for me it's a disqualifying view. Um, It it, it matches Holocaust denial is. Um, Unfortunately, all mass killings like this, uh, be it in Bosnia, be it in Rwanda, be it it during World War II, there's always a denial movement that emerges in its aftermath. That has happened in Rwanda, And a large component of that denial movement emanates from the ICTR defence team for which she worked. But Gola has told me yesterday on this programme, just because she was part of a defence team in a voluntary or otherwise capacity doesn't mean she's a denier of genocide. And she says she found that grossly offensive. What's your reaction to that? Well, I I, I, I can tell you what, it's not half as grossly offensive as the photo she took with Simon McKinney. But to answer the substantive question, she knew going in what the ICTR defence strategy was, which was to re- uh, pr- uh, posit a revisionist account of what happened in 1994. Historical re- revisionism and genocide denial are one and the same. She knew that going in and still volunteered. If she believed 
in the official true history of what happened in 1994 if she objects to genocide denial in the way that she claims. Why on earth would she volunteer to help sell those lies? So, right, so what you're suggesting in a way is that the Green Party, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, stop me. So, in a way, what you're suggesting is GoRes has been marketed by the Green Party, right, as a pillar of human rights. But what you're saying is if she really wanted to be the outstanding human rights campaigner that she's marketed herself as, she could have been choosing other options as opposed to being on a defence team, like, say, for example, working with family members affected by genocide. So in a way, you're suggesting she's been a little bit too opportunistic uh, to get on that human rights UN ladder. Is that right? I, 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 could, I could tell you one thing. After the genocide, the justice system in Rwanda was, was laid to waste. Um, and there remains capacity shortcomings in the legal system in Rwanda. Her experience and knowledge and expertise with regards to human rights law would have been very useful there in building capacity, and that would have had a lasting and positive impression. I don't believe she set foot in Rwanda. She spent the entire time in Tanzania, in Arusha, in the UN edifice, the ICTR, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, hobnobbing with uh, defence lawyers who, almost without exception, uh, well-known genocide deniers in their own right. So, yes, my, I think as a, as, as, as a young woman looking to for a life-changing experience in Africa, as she put it in the Herald uh, story, the way to do it would have been to deal with the suffering of the victims and not concern herself with the rights of the accused at the ICTR who had the best and most expensive legal representation money can buy. Do you accept, though, that being part of a defence team doesn't mean nor necessarily mean you're a genocide denier? No, uh, there are, there are ICTR defence lawyers who, who do not buy into genocide denial theories, who don't, for example, demand that the victims should be dragged in front of the war crimes tribunal as well, which is a classic uh, Hutu power uh, technique that most of the lawyers on the ICTR defence team use. There are some good guys among the defence team, but I haven't heard a clear, unequivocal statement um, from Golrez to, to the effect that she accepts that there was a genocide against the Tutsis of Rwanda in 1994 that led to the deaths of between 800,000 and 1 million people and that the people that she defended were rightfully convicted of the crimes that they were accused of. If she was to say that clearly and unequivocally, although speaking clearly and unequivocally is clearly not a strength when you look at her CV, uh, if she said that clearly and unequivocally, then I would feel some relief. But the evidence, all the evidence I can see, is that she went out of her way as a volunteer with many other options uh, on the table to defend the worst of the worst and to defend the worst of the worst who are surrounded by more lawyers than any, any um, you know, charged individual in New Zealand would ever hope to see. Um, Phil, Phil, the I... average genocide kid accused has more lawyers than Donald Trump. Yeah, it's the UN. Amazing, isn't it? When I read the, the staggering amount of money um, provided to the lawyers, I thought, well, somebody's making money. The UN does very nice out of these types of crimes, might I add. Now, I want to get your comments on Professor of Faculty of Law at uh, University of Otago, Andrew Giddies. He's, he's been quite... Um, yep. He's come into bat for Gorez, as you know. He says your beef with yep. allowing people, your beef is more about allowing people to volunteer as unpaid part of the defence process would appear better aimed at the UN rather than someone wanting to get a first step on the ladder towards a career in international human rights law. In a way, he's right. We're not. I mean, that's kind of what Gorez, you could argue, was trying to do, regardless of whether she was acting on the prosecution side or the defence side. What do you say? She, 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 there was still a moral component to that choice. Um, a large part of this debate seems to me to be between lawyers like Andrew, who see this about in, in abstract terms of grandiose justice principles, and the average person who looks at the moral choice she made mm. uh, when so many other better options were available to her. That, to me, is a fundamental issue. I'm, I'm not, I don't dispute anyone's right to the best legal representation available, and I would never do so. Uh, even though I've been attacked relentlessly for having allegedly claimed that uh, um, over the last two days. Nevertheless, look, Andrew's, I would, I would respond to Andrew's piece if he said a single thing that was substantively responsive to my original column. Um, he was engaging in classic legal sophistry, 
um, based on zero knowledge of Rwanda and the, and the history of the genocide, which was revealed in many ways during the course of that article that I won't get into here. Well, obviously, one thing that um, you would probably agree with Andrew's analogous, uh, analogy of what you've written is that he's, he says sometimes being too close to the subject causes you to lose perspective. What's your response to that? And I guess because you have well, lived I'm, in I'm Rwanda, I'm haven't I'm you? I'm I've lived in Rwanda. I worked on the 20th commemoration of the genocide. I worked on the uh, the, uh, the the uh, closing down of the Chacha courts. I worked with survivors um, very closely, including one I wrote about today, Noel, who left, who lost every single member of his extended family and only survived himself by being disguised in girls' clothing. It, surely, uh, I, and, and I acknowledged in the article in Stuff uh, today that, that that has made me biased biased in favour of the victims, biased in favour of the survivors. But I think I deserve some credit that I have enough nous to assess this issue um, with some objectivity, I, given that I'm, I've forgotten more about Rwanda during the course of this phone conversation than Andrew Geddes will ever know. Do you think Golrez Goraman should step down from Parliament, given her history on this defence team? Do you question her I, ability I to make do you, do you question her ability to make then moral judgment? Look, I, I question the ability of many members of our parliament to make good moral judgments. Yes, as I've said, I believe if I'm right, uh, and I believe I am, that she shares the ICTR defence team's revisionist view of the genocide. If that is correct and she has not refuted it, in explicit terms, as far as I can tell, then I believe that is disqualifying. However, I also accept that I come, you know, I have a very strong view about this, and that most people might think that this is not uh, a firing offence. Having said that, I think at least, at least she should acknowledge the pain and the suffering that she has caused um, in terms of not being upfront and causing this to become an issue in Rwanda and, and, and so many of my friends, so many survivors have been online on social media expressing their disgust and dismay. This is bad for our relationship with Rwanda and it needs to be fixed. But, you know, she can, if she does the right thing and stands up in Parliament and says, I believe in clear, unequivocal terms that the ICTR's determination of the genocide of 1994 is correct and that the defence version was historical revisionism and it was wrong. If she says that clearly and unequivocally, if she accepts the, the convictions that were handed down to her clients, then, then I think we can probably move on. Phil, it's interesting that some journalists have uh, gone into bat for her, although have admitted leaving out details of her involvement in the defence and they've now chosen to publish it now. Do you find that slightly bizarre? It's almost as if it went against the narrative of her being seen as a human rights advocate and now they're publishing it now. Yeah, it, it makes yeah. I find that kind of odd, particularly if journalists have chosen a narrative to suit the loves and kisses kind of illustration yeah. they probably this want is, to portray first off. You know, what did you think? Bias. It's confirmation bias at work, isn't it, Chris? I mean, they, they've well, it is. To, yes, they, 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 they've just, decided to write a narrative that didn't fit their way. Yes. That, that, she, that she is a, some kind of Angelina Jolie, Mother Teresa hybrid uh, shooting star in the New Zealand political scene. And we like to have shooting stars. We like to have characters. We like yes, to have of different course. people with different backgrounds. And, and um, sure, they, they, they wanted to see her succeed. And, and this, is, this is counter to that. And, and, they, and it has taken some time for the mainstream media to see the significance of this. Um, but really, politically, the, the, greater da the greater risk is that this problem of of embellishing her record, obfuscating the role she played, saying she was a prosecutor when she was a defender, all that stuff, it goes back to the Toure incident. They, 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 they are closing the shop and uh, putting their head in the sand and hoping it goes away without acknowledging the, the central problem, which is that New Zealanders look at, at, a, at, an, at an MP who they've discovered, uh, dedicated a good part of her career in New Zealand as well as Rwanda, defending... Genocide, uh, the uh, people who committed crimes in the genocide. Because bear in mind, she also defend, um, opposed the extradition of a Rwandan war criminal from New Zealand who had lied to become a refugee and, and subsequently gained New Zealand citizenship illegally. When the New Zealand government sought to extradite him to Rwanda, who was his lawyer? 
no one else but, you know, Gores. There is a pattern here. This was long before she went to, to the ICTR. It is clear she has an affinity to the ICTR defence narrative, the revisionist view of the genocide, and unless I hear a clear repudiation of that, I'll continue to believe that's the case, just, based on her behaviour, based on her writing, and based on her conduct. Just finally, Phil, I note that um, she has changed her Wikipedia page to be more reflective of her history. I understand, too, on News Talks there be several days ago, she said she would get the Green MP bio information updated to reflect her experience. Is that good yes. enough? Well, it's a start. You would have thought the Greens, given their demographic, would be able to up upgrade a website in, 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 in under a minute. Um, so it surprises me that they are continuing to allow the abject sophistry that her current profile is, um, you know, like keeping it on there without replacing it with a factual account of what she actually did and who she actually defended. Phil Quinn, it's nice to speak with you. I understand you're in Colombia and I really appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chris. Phil Quinn.